relationship moves forward, it would be a second marriage for both. Well, uh, her almost fiance's family uh, has some pretty strong feelings about remarriage, and I don't know if that will ever be solved. But they, in their own hearts and with what they believe is godly counsel, feel okay about it. Here's the reality. <clears throat> I think you submit it to God first. I don't want to sound overly spiritual about it. But I think the reality is you do marry the family. And if you choose to marry into a family where there's some conflict, you have to understand that that conflict may continue for some season. You know, But I would say be led by the Lord first. And absolutely seek the family's blessing, always. You know, I think that's important because you do marry the family. Um, and, and, and that's an important part because it's difficult enough sometimes to, to leave and cleave. But if you pull that person's family and the history, and even if it's difficult sometimes, it, it can create some crisis for the person you fell in love with. And so, um, you know, it, maybe it's a timing issue. Maybe there's a way to say, I respect what you're saying to me. Would you at least be willing to get to know me before you make an ultimate decision about what you think about me or my relationship with your daughter? You know, I think there's different ways about being honest about that. But sometimes you're going to get a no no matter what. And I think you have to, um, you have to seek wise counsel about it. And you have to get before the Lord and see what he's telling you. What would be honoring to him? No. Eric. Yes. Yeah. Couple, couple more. Go ahead. Um, I know that you can't really put a time limit on it, but how long would you recommend um, dating before engagement? And then how long would you recommend engagement before marriage? question was, is how long do you recommend dating before engagement? How long do you recommend engagement before marriage? Um, the second one is easier. I believe in relatively short engagements. I don't think anyone needs to be engaged for much longer than a year. Like I said, my personal belief is that an engagement is enough time to get it on the calendar and give your family and your friends and your loved ones time that they can put it on their calendars and celebrate with you. So I think that's the primary purpose of an engagement. Get it on the calendar and to give you sufficient time with your fiance to, to plan the event. Um, I think there could be all kinds of dating. Um, when Don and I started dating again, and it really was two years between <laughs> dates, by the way. Um, I know you're sitting there, yeah, that's just too funny. Um, she did move home for a year, but you know, we continued our friendship. But when we started dating, it was like in November, in a November, I bought a ring in January. She didn't know it, because I was finishing up grad school, and uh, I proposed in May. And that was a disaster, too. You want to hear that one? <laughs> you know how couples talk about getting married? Okay, Couples are falling in love, and they think God's leading this way. So we, I took it up to Washington. Had it all planned out. Had a nice romantic lunch at my favorite Italian restaurant up there. We're sitting somewhere on the mall at the, near the reflection pond between the Lincoln Memorial and the Washington Memorial. Beautiful day. She's sitting down in the grass. I'm lying down with my head in her lap. I kind of looked up, I leaned up on my shoulder. I said, can I ask you a question? She said, sure. I said, um, would you marry me? She goes, sure. As soon as you ask. <laughs> I, said, I said, no, honey. I said, would you marry me? Absolutely. Whenever you're ready to ask. I'm like, I'm blowing it. I'm asking. And she does. She thinks we're going to talk about it again. And I took the ring out and I said, no, would you marry me? And she's just, oh. <laughs> I, I think dating times depend on people. I think the question is, have you done the work? Have you done the due diligence? It, it, and I'm not saying just check off a list. It's not that simplistic. But again, I think if, you, if you've talked about some of those areas with that person, and not that you would have 100% agreement on all those principles I talked about, but have you at least talked through them? Have you worked it to the point that you feel like there's enough compatibility, there's enough of a sense of common ground that we feel called to this, then, you know, I think uh, there's, 
it, it, and there might be other factors. It might feel like, yeah, we could get married now, but man, we'd be carrying a ton of debt. And do we want? I don't know. Or I'm I'm in the middle of school. If we get married right now, what would it be like? You know, to finish out the last year and a half married us, and we're still in school. I think those kinds of things may impact the timing from dating to engagement. But again, I think you can talk about those things. And I think you can talk about them in such a way that you can still create an element of surprise and blessing and fun when that time comes as well. Yes, a couple, two more and then I'm gonna, I know, yes. Um, earlier you had mentioned that um, if a, a couple's starts to date for a little bit, then they decide to move in together, that that can They start to date. Yeah, oh, the question is: is they start to date, and maybe they realize that ah, we're not supposed to date. But then it's like awkward. It's like, well, I'm going to be your friend. Well, let, let me let me put it this way: How about make a commitment to be friendly? Well, I, I don't mean like a friendly acquaintance. I mean when someone for years calls someone their best friend who they dated off and on, and they're like, oh, we're just friends. Oh, my best friend. Uh, well, I mean, if you have a sense that that person, one person sort of feeling like the other sort of belongs to them in the friendship, uh, you know, there's part of me that wants to say, is that starting to get into some boundaries or some codependency kinds of things? Because, you know, what if the person who feels like we're just supposed to be friends and not move forward in this relationship finds someone else and they say, I'm supposed to marry this person? Well, you can't take that one along into the marriage and the relationship. You just can't take that one along into a serious dating and a courting relationship, too. So at some point, boundaries are going to have to be discussed and, and set, and that may cause some pain. But in that kind of dynamic, there's probably more going on behind the scenes than just that. And, and so you might need to help have a third person help unpack that. Last question. Yes, ma'am. What is the knowledge about statistics about remarriage? Knowledge and statistics about remarriage. Um, and all those things I talked about, like couples should talk about before getting married, I would emphasize 100% more on a remarriage because the divorce rate for remarriage is two times that of first marriage. Now, I'm not saying that that should necessarily make someone insecure or afraid to remarry, if that's your circuit. All I'm saying is it's even more critical for a couple that's considering remarriage, even if only one of the two is their second marriage. Um, it's even more critical to talk before moving to that point because the statistics show that the divorce rate is about twice as much in the second marriage. Okay? Listen, my time is up. Thank you so much for being nice. I love you.